are a best-selling author and you started off with a book called The Daughter-in-Law Rule. So first off, we're going to have to start figuring out how you got into this business and why did you publish The Daughter-in-Law Rules as your first book? Well, it was it was sort of a need that I, I needed to fill on my own. I had always been a jazz piano player, and um, when I had my children, I couldn't be out staying late, you know, staying late, going to the jazz clubs, traveling the world, and burning the candle both ends. So I was home a lot and reinventing myself and learning how to be a mom. And of course, my mother in law was starting to make comments, and so I was getting a little bit, well, I'll say annoyed. Mm. And, Right into the rules, ladies, and I said, you know, ladies, you help all these women. The rules, meet ladies. You mean the books from the the book from the eighties on dating and finding the men of your dreams? Yes, it was actually a mid nineties runaway bestseller, and it was Time Says the Secrets for Capturing the Heart of Mister Right, and it was a big bestseller. And I emailed them, and I said, you help all these women meet and marry the men of their dreams. Where's the manual for the mother-in-law? And they said, "Well, you know, that's a great idea. Actually, we'll we'll check with our agent on that one." And I was excited because I really just wanted advice. And they came back a couple weeks later, and they wrote. They said, "Our agent's really busy right now, but you know what? You should write this." I thought, "Me? The last thing I wrote was a paper in high school. Are you crazy?" But then the gears started turning. And I thought, you know. Maybe I can do this. And I started to jot down all the things that bothered me, every little thing from, um, you know, the household items to beauty techniques to that oh so lovely unsolicited advice on how, how to handle my children. Yes. And before I knew it, even though a lot of these rules were written as a tongue in cheek coping mechanism, when I put a few of them into practice and saw that they started to work, I thought, aha, maybe I can truly help other young wives save them from years of needless contention. And so the daughter-in-law rules was born. Ooh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So you published a book to help other women deal with, you know, a situation that all wives will have to deal with eventually, and that's dealing with their mother-in-law. Is this something that you did on your own, or did you go out and find a publisher to help you publish this? Well, I started off not knowing anything about the entire publishing industry and process, and I just thought that traditionally you had to get an agent and a publisher, and I thought, you know what, I know nothing about this, but I'm willing to try. So I found out that you had to write a query letter. I actually uh, got that whole book about you know which agencies to, to, to write to. I, I Googled many, many agencies, and I picked out like about 100 of them. I sent out uh, about a hundred query letters and got one response. Well, actually, one positive response. I got okay. about ten rejections and one positive response, and they actually were interested in my concept. And at that point, I got a little nervous. So I thought, well, I'm a charlatan. I'm not a writer. What am I doing with a New York agent? Repping New my York book? That's agent. crazy. Hmm. <laughs> So I was talking about this one day to my piano tuner, and he said, oh, well, my wife is a editor, professional editor. She was. She worked in magazines. You should let her help you. I thought, great. <laughs> so long story short, I did ask her to help me, and um, in, the, in the midst of it all, she had a lot of ideas that were you know, great, but they were not my ideas. And just long story short, I ended up writing a second book <laughs> called The Collaborator Rules, 101 mm. Sure to Stay Friends with Your Co-Author. So it's basically like, you know, I always find that if you're obsessed about something or if you have a problem of your own, why not write about it and then help other people? Well, it makes total sense because if you have the problem, chances are somebody else is, is dealing uh, with the same issues. And it's, it, it's interesting that you talk about uh, getting into a partnership with a co-author and not necessarily knowing or understanding the dynamic of, of working with a, with a co-author. So that's really interesting that you did learn that. So yes, it was very interesting, and I thought there were a lot of probably other people that were thinking, "Oh, how fun! Let me do this with a partner, with a friend," you know. But you know, it's it's easy to have a a, a partner, and it's easy to have a friend, but it's not easy to have both. Mm. There's so many tricky nuance, nuances when you're working on a creative project. So um, I thought that maybe this would this particular book would would help a lot of people before they delve into you know a creative partnership. Yeah. Sometimes people yeah. don't understand what they're getting into. So um, there was nothing wrong with that lovely person. It was just we had completely opposite ideas. The long and short of it was is that the agency dropped us because we were arguing. 
Oh. And so back to square one. Okay, you know what? It's a blessing in disguise because what I had learned through this process was even if we were lucky enough to get picked up by a publisher, and we had gone through the whole, you know, writing a book proposal, I learned about that, which is great because I got to learn about both sides of this publishing, traditional publishing versus self-publishing. Yeah. And when I finally uh, was able to get out of the contract or we were released from the contract, I decided that I was happier and I was excited because I learned that, you know, when you go with a traditional publisher, you have to give up your rights for one. You yeah. have to give up all your creative rights. You don't have any, you know, input into the cover design or the interior design or you don't have any input into the editing. The, the book could end up sounding and feeling like a completely different book than what, what you had given to them. So I was excited because I'm the kind of person that I've always been in control of my own music and my compositions and I have a very strong need to, to really be in control of my creative projects. So I realized that self-publishing was really for me. That's, that's what I wanted. And when I saw that there were... That